Hey y'all, this is Bill Hewitt, PowerStrokeHelp.com. I want to let you know it's beanie time. Right now you can go to the website and uh, go to PowerStrokeHelp.com and click on the arch roll button and you get a free beanie for any order over $50. And if you put Bill 10, B-I-L-L 10 in this code, you get 10% off. So make sure you get $60 worth of stuff. So you have $50 worth that you spend money on so you can get a free beanie. Beanie time. You know you want one. You know you want one. So go to the website and make that happen right now. Artroil.powerstrokehelp.com. Make it happen today. Nice chilly morning here in Georgia. Got me my new Gobi jacket for Christmas. All you guys up north got snowmobile jackets, so you know what this is. But there's this little battery inside here. And you press a little button and it keeps you nice and toasty. And I hate being cold in winter. I hate being cold, period. But... But Mama got this for me. I'm happy. I'm gonna wear this now. You ever seen one of these? Now that's just that's the real deal. Um, we're gonna talk about bent Aluma duty. I spent my life around bent vehicles. You know, we're always looking at them to see if we can save them. You know, we've been dealing with with steel all these years, and steel is is really malleable. The 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 material is extremely malleable. If you know how to work sheet metal, uh, you can stretch it. You can make it you can make it contract. Uh, 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 steel now, and you can you can it, you can bend it, you can pound it, you can bondo it, you can do all sorts of work to it. You can work the metal. When Ford Motor Company went to an aluminum body, they completely changed the rules. The rules of this material, aluminum, now is completely different animal than working with steel. Uh, it's it's much more difficult. Uh, it's not near as malleable, and it doesn't. I guess the big thing about aluminum is it doesn't crumple the same way as steel does. Now. This truck here still had to pass uh, safety tests. So there are crumple zones, there are a, uh, a methodology of being able to make the vehicle safe for the uh, occupant if they get into an accident, but the material is completely different to repair. So this video is an attempt to explain these differences and what's involved here. 2017 I went to SEMA when the Super Duties came out. Unfortunately, that's the last time I've been to. I'd like to have gone, but it's just life has been different for me the last, last few years. And they had a bunch of Aluma Duty bodies apart. There's a whole section at SEAM out there in Las Vegas, a 100,000 square foot room full of body and paint. And, one of the, and they were really hot on these aluminum bodies back that year. And they had several of them taken apart on frame stands and, and different measuring devices to be able to put them back accurately. One of the thing, key things that's very important to understand is you know, they, they call this the B pillar and the roof and such. But where these go together, where there would originally be a spot weld in steel, these are glued. No shit, it's actually glued. And it's extremely effective. So they've replaced spot welds from the past with glue spots, basically. It's, it's glue welds, and it's effective, it works. Um, they hold together until you heat them. Now if you take a, you take a, you don't even have to take a hot torch, you don't have to take an acetylene torch, you take a, like a map gas torch, and you hit those spots where these, these pieces are, the, you know, like the, the rocker and the, and, the, and the B pillar or the A pillar or, or whatever are glued together, they will come right apart. One of the things that we gotta talk about, it's very important about uh, an accident in one of these trucks is that they're so difficult to repair that a minor accident that you would see in a, uh, a steel body truck that would have been easily repairable will total the truck uh, in, a, in a, an aluminum duty. And part of the reason is, and it has to do with the material itself, when the force of the accident hits this spot, instead of absorbing it, uh, instead of absorbing the energy like a steel panel would, it actually transfers it. The molecules are much tightly, more tightly packed in uh, aluminum, and as a result, it transfers into this area. So what happens is, is not only does it crunch the fender and the inner fender, but it also transfers it back through the door. Now this one didn't get hard, hit hard enough, but I've seen a couple where the door won't open here, because this part, the aluminum part, has been pushed back and transfers back and will actually ladder, end up skewing or laddering what they would, you know, the, I don't know, a body shop language here, they, they call it laddering a frame when a frame will, will, get, will get skewed when it, from a frontal impact. Um, it'll actually kind of ladder the body. In other words, the body will no longer be square. It'll no longer bolt onto the frame. And as a result of this, it's totaled. And so you see a lot of these trucks that are, uh, um, on the uh, auctions that don't look like they hurt that bad uh, and they got they got titles that are that are salvaged titles 
and don't even don't even deploy the airbags. Um, this one was totaled, and it didn't deploy the airbag. Um, and it's a you know 10,000 mile 2021, just a standard like I would use as a truck now truck. And I'm considering rebuilding this truck. I have a hood and a few other pieces that I can rebuild this truck with. Um, but it, it requires a frame pull this direction to bring this part back. But it takes triple the force to move an aluminum piece as it does a steel piece. A steel piece you can you can use a frame frame puller and it'll da, 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 and it'll just come right out. Whereas this one you really feel the frame machine struggling and that becomes extremely dangerous uh, because uh, as you apply more force of course if the chain lets loose or the, the clamp device lets loose um, you know that shit will sling across the shot and you know hurt somebody if they or break something. So it becomes a game of of is it really worth it to, to put yourself in danger? And I don't really know the damage yet until I get the headlight and all that stuff out of there and the AC condenser. Um, but it didn't even break the radiator. So it's, and they totaled this truck. And it's really not that much damage. But the other thing is, is that, and this is really a note for uh, one of the younger guys that's looking for a trade to be in. You want to make a lot of money and have consistent work for the rest of your life, which is, you know, part of the reason I did Power Stroke Specialty. I knew there was going to be people that were always going to need work done. Get good at fixing these, okay? Really, the success in business is to be a one-trick pony. I'm really, really good at the one trick. So the trick you learn is how to fix aluminum bodies. Ford will send you to school. And then, you know, work for Ford for a couple years and start out on your own fixing them. But be a specialist. Now, this bed isn't bad. But it's it's tweaked under here, and Ford Motor Company they won't they won't you, you, they won't try to fix these dents. They won't try to bend this out. You know, paintless dent removal guys just hate aluminum bodies because it's just damn near impossible to get the dents out using the methodologies that they perfected on steel. So Ford and the Ford mandate is to replace this whole panel. You have to take the bed off. You have to turn it upside down. You have to break the break, break down the the aluminum panel off of its welds. Uh, it's it's it's. Uh, uh, aluminum welds and then you have to get a new one and then you have to refinish it and put it on and that's a dent those dents right here this damage here that had been on a steel bed that would have been easy fix okay um, even the even the dents in the tailgate it's extremely difficult to fix these trucks um, you know a little damage back here on the frame which you know big hammer and a chain and, and something pull we get that straight but what I'm saying is is that is that the the, the damage to these bodies um, it's not as easy to fix as it was with a steel body. And as a result, because of a lack of technicians and because of the labor rates such as they are, these trucks get totaled very easily. I mean, this is a 10,000 mile, you know, 2021 truck. And, uh, you know, it runs and drives. It runs and drives good. You know, it's like brand new inside. Airbags were not deployed. There's no check engine lights on. Um, just, you know, damage from an accident. Probably got spun out at an intersection or something. Florida truck. And so the hood's, you know, see the hood's tweaked over a little bit. And I, you know, and so is it in the hinge? Is it in the actual, is it in, in the part here? And this is, this is part of the, the work that goes on with body repair businesses to go do an exploratory of figuring out exactly what's wrong with it. I love it. I actually really like doing this work. Never really figured out how to make any money doing it. But I enjoy doing it. Uh, it. It's like an adventure every time you take one apart because everyone's a little different. And, you know, I stuck with what I was good at, which was mechanics. I'd lose my shirt in the commodity business because I'm a perfectionist and I take too long. And you have to just, you know, do the work and keep moving to the next thing. Whereas I like to get involved with it. Um, you know, but I've always been that way uh, with body. I love, and I love paint. I just always love paint too. So there's a little problem going on here. But, you know, we'll see what has to be done and make a decision once I get it apart, whether I'm just going to cut it up for parts or, or actually try to take this one and put it back into a running operable vehicle that goes through his inspection and they check it and go to the, you know, send it to the state and, you know, six to eight weeks later, you get a rebuilt title, which in a rental truck, what do I care? It's just, it's just another one to put down the road. Uh, but it's, it's, I just like the challenge of being able to straighten one of these things out. It's just put it back together and look at it and say, yeah, I fixed that. I built that. I really enjoyed doing that. Nothing makes me happy like brand new stuff. Brand new Ford engine, not remanufactured, brand new off the assembly line, just gives me the happy spot. Remember that one where I talked about the tuning problem and killing your engine? Well, this is the engine that got ordered for it. Way back in November, and we're finally seeing it. Well, there's a reason for it. Unfortunately, it's politics that causes this problem. So interesting thing on the box that showed up here 
you can see right there, the build date on this was 105.23 for this uh, reman well, that's remanufactured parts. Doesn't look remanufactured, it looks brand new to me. But the date of manufacture was 105.23. Now there's a reason for this, and it's actually politics. Don't like to talk about politics and religion because we might stop being friends, but this is a political thing. And here it is. Way back in the day, Jimmy Carter, Lyndon Johnson, whoever, the Democrats made a deal with the unions that the unions would supply the votes to the Democrat side if the uh, Democrat Party, Democratic Party would, you know, do things that were in the best interest of the unions. Bill Clinton did it. Obama did it. Biden has done it. When they get into office, the Democratic Party will pass tax laws. And the tax laws are, one of the things, part of the tax laws is that they tax inventory. There's a huge inventory tax. And the deal is, is that the, the unions don't want the management people to make the decision to produce a lot of things and not have any work for the next year. So they want to ensure that there's work every year for their union members. And so what they do is they tax uh, uh, inventory heavily. And as a result of this, once you're once they're out at the end of the year, if you don't have a motor, like we ordered this, we ordered this back in, in, in what was it, November? It was like Thanksgiving, wasn't it, Mike? Before Thanksgiving, that damn truck's been sitting in here tore down, and they're just now getting it. Well, it's because of the inventory tax that we didn't get it. And here it is. Now it's here. I mean, the fifth, we, 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 you know, they started up production, they knocked it out. Now, it may have already been produced and they didn't put it in the box. That's a different conversation. But I know of a lot of people all over the map that have been hunting motors since September, October, uh, and they're just out of stock. Now they're in stock, and this is why. Got to love it when the man, you know, steps in to save us from ourselves, right? One other little item that I came across my world I've never seen before is a company called IPR. Some of y'all may be familiar with that. I've never seen this before. And uh, it's a very interesting solution by, of, of oil cooler issues, which if you just change your coolant, you don't need an external oil cooler. But this is using a late model 6.7 style oil cooler and cooling it with coolant, okay? Which is part of this regulator thingy over here. Uh, for the coolant and then you know your oil filter is still in there and, and, and I see this design we had to put new hoses on it uh, because they took the leak and it looks like the bulletproof design if you don't need an external oil cooler you don't need an external oil cooler it's just that damn simple if you change your coolant every 30,000 miles you don't need this but I just thought it was an interesting solution to a problem that really isn't there um, you know, the internet gimmick bullshit that's constantly going on out there. But it's a pain in the ass for the guy uh, because they're constantly screwing it up. The retards at the oil chain shop, you got to change your oil, oil because they're going to mess it up. And it's going to leak and all the rest of that. So, you know, I, does it work? Yeah, it works as long as it doesn't go to leaking, which is the reason I don't install the bulletproof ones anymore. Because they leak. And then they call me back and say, oh, it's leaking. What do I do? You know, two years later, it's like, well... You're the one who wanted it. So, you know, this is just one of those things that cross the path. I like the design. I think it's a great idea. But in the practical world, in the day-to-day -day use of our, our real-world situation, and in, in, in the, in the idiots that we have changing oil out there, you're going to run into problems. It's just going to be problematic, you know. And But IPR looks like a real nice, well-put-together kit. Looks like it works great until it doesn't. Just like my ex-wife, she loved me till she didn't, and then one day she didn't, and then she really didn't, and hired a lawyer and, you know, cried in my beer for two years. It is what it is. Oil coolers have been known to be a problem with these six liters, but maintenance on the cooling system is key to keeping these things free flow from the beginning, a, right. a, a clean bill of health from the start. I mean, we've even stopped installing uh, coolant filters because they just really don't need them, right? Yes. And as long as you change the coolant every 30,000 miles, drain and flush, you're good to go. I mean, you're good to go. The stock oil cooler will work just fine. I mean, it's 2% of the time do you need an external oil cooler. I mean, it just doesn't make sense. If you choose to run water <laughs> due to a problem with your cooling system, you will create rust. That yeah. will scale and stop up your oil cooler. And then you stop up your oil cooler and you big back to crying in your beer. And if not for the next guy, I promise. Yeah, it'll end up here. Mikey will cuss you. It'll, it'll, we'll, we'll make fun of you for putting water in it. Hey, y'all, thank you for making Power Stroke help and Power Stroke Specialty the number one stop on the internet for the Power Stroke owner and enthusiast. And look, beanie things going on right now. One last reminder if you want one, you need to log into PowerStrokeHelp.com and 
click on the button and order one in there. It's only good while supplies last. I mean, it's it's spend 50 bucks and get a free hat. You know you want one. You know you, you ban it yourself that the dog chewed your last one. You know, your, your ex-wife burned it in the yard with all your stuff. You know, uh, your cousin, you know, when he was over at the Super Bowl party, sat on it and made all that terrible stink on it. And now you can't wear it. You know, you know there's a reason. There's a reason. There's a good reason. And you need to replace it. You need a new one. Because this is bright and shiny, baby. Ooh-wee. Nice and pretty. Hey, thanks for stopping. Thanks for listening to what I got to say. I hope it helps you. But it only works if you do what I do what I ask you to do, what me and Mikey tell you to do, because we come out here and see all this all day long. We're just trying to help you make good decisions with your truck.